Welcome to today's blogging video. It is all about goals that you should be setting as a new blogger. Now that I'm for almost five years, which is insane, on my blog, I've realized there's a lot of noise in the blogging atmosphere on like what different people think that you should be doing. I personally think a lot of it is a waste of time and doesn't necessarily help you grow as efficiently and as fast as possible. So if I was a new blogger today, these would be the tips that I would be giving myself and therefore the tips that I think you should be taking as a new blogger. Okay, so I have a long list of questions or like things, not questions, but things that I would tell myself. And I think the first one that is very valuable for new bloggers, again, if I was starting out would be what's the goal here? Is your goal to make money as fast as possible? That was my goal just because I was a sophomore in college. I was swimming in debt and I needed to earn income. So I've now been able to switch from earning income to now kind of what do I actually want to be doing with my career? But you might be in a different situation. Maybe you want to grow traffic to your business, which is already established. Like let's say you have a, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, like but a pet supply store. Maybe you want to grow that pet supply store that you already have and want to get more traffic to it, want to sell more products. We have a crazy week. We just finished the house and then we're launching the planners next week. So all the girls came in from that. But basically what I was trying to get to is like, let's say you have a store that you want to bring traffic to. You're going to handle that blog differently than you like, you just want to grow followers on Instagram. Like there's so many different scenarios that you, it will be helpful to think about in what you are, I don't know. It's just going to be helpful in like growing that initial blog. Um, so, okay, now that I've gotten that tangent out of the way, one of my first tips is to get a decent looking website. Doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be decent. I've said this in a lot of my videos, we live in a world where it matters what things look like, whether you wanna agree with that or whether you don't wanna agree with that, and putting together a website is so much harder than it looks, and I also think personally that it's a waste of time for you to hire someone, a waste of time and money, or I guess not time, but more money for you to hire someone to actually design a website for you in these beginning stages. I mean, like, let's be real here. Probably like 5% of the people that start blogs actually continue with it. And so I would just get a super basic, inexpensive theme to start off with. You can find them on Etsy. I got mine when I first started off on 17th Avenue Designs. And um, the themes will just help you get that initial base established so then you can go spend the time doing the things that actually matter like writing blog posts the design is the fun part of it but it really doesn't make you any money but you also can't have it be looking ugly because then you look unprofessional kind of understand what i'm trying to get to um and then my second tip that not to toot my own horn but i think that this is one of the reasons why I was able to be successful and a reason that a lot of people aren't able to be successful is that you have to stay consistent. So you can be consistent posting one blog post a month or you can be consistent posting two blog posts a week. Like you just need to get into that consistent mindset. You can't be going, you can't go post. I mean, I personally don't think and Google also agrees with me from a ranking perspective. It's not really smart to be going and posting five blog posts in one week and then not posting on your blog for like a year. So you kind of have to like just make sure that you get in a routine of things and knowing that maybe in the beginning blogging is really fun, but after a while it becomes work. And um, so it's just keeping going through those like not everything's going to be fun and getting past those times that aren't fun and like keeping going will help you be so much more successful and really it will help you grow faster than like taking breaks because you get bored of doing something like you just have to force yourself to keep going okay as far as social media goes you have to get yourself on pinterest pinterest is the only social media that i personally think is worth your time in the beginning for getting traffic to your website. So Instagram, like even for my Instagram, our percentage of people that go from my, like let's say Instagram story where I link a blog post 
is so, 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 so small. Like 1% of what goes from Pinterest to the website. And that's just because Pinterest is the only social media platform that is specifically designed to get people to your website. So when you're on Pinterest, you'll see different pins and they're all linked to a website. So it's just one click. And that's not the case for a lot of other social medias. On TikTok, you can't even like link anything besides in your bio. Like that's just, it. Pinterest is by far the easiest one. We still now get 50% of our traffic from Pinterest. We are trying to lower that amount, like different eggs in different baskets, but you don't need to think about this yet when you're in the beginning stages. Um, so Pinterest will be the fastest way that you can get people to your website. And then the more readers you get onto the website, the faster you can apply to an ad network, which the ad networks usually require a certain amount of people to um, view your page every single month before you're allowed to get accepted into it. So getting those initial readers are really important. Um, and then another tip that I think that I, <laughs> that I just thought of is you need to know what's important to think about versus what's not important to think about. So like on Pinterest, you should be on Pinterest, but honestly, like the amount of impressions that you get really doesn't matter. What matters is how many views or how many clicks you're getting to your actual website. So we could be having 30 million people a month, which I think, Sarah, how many people do we have? How many impressions do we get on Pinterest a month? Like literally 30 million, right? Yeah, it might be more. Might be more, like more than 30 million. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't actually correlate to the amount of people that are clicking to our website. And so it doesn't really matter how many people are looking like we need people to click onto our website so then we can you know like whatever our goal is whether it's like getting that traffic to get into that initial ad agency affiliate income selling products creating your brand for yourself um so that's just something to think about and then roi this was a when i was first starting my blog I, there was like a really big blogger. She was making like $25,000 a month on her blog and she kept talking about ROI. I had no idea what ROI was. And so I started researching and I kind of became obsessed with the idea and I still think about it. And so ROI is return on investment. This is another thing that I talk about all the time in on this channel. And you have to, in the beginning stages, every single thing that you do you need to think about your return on investment. So is it worth you spending time doing this? Are you gonna end up earning money from this? Like what is going to come out of you spending time doing this? Because I think that a lot of time can be wasted in that beginning stage. Again, designing your website. What is the ROI of that? There really isn't a great ROI in the beginning, but you have to do it. So what's the most efficient way to do it? Go buy a theme from Etsy that's already basically set up for you. You just need to go change the name of it. The colors are already set up. The tabs are already set up. Um, so like that would be a good use of your ROI. Another good use of ROI that I focused on so much, and this is another reason why I think that my website was able to grow so fast, there is a huge ROI in taking courses. So I am constantly, even to this day, whenever we start something new, we, like the entire BSL team, we take courses. I was a stickler about taking courses. If I made $100 on my website, I would buy like right away a new course because it saved me so much time. So instead of taking six months, which is like the short term, I mean, just everything takes like a really long time. Like instead of taking six months to learn how to do my email strategy, I took a course and it taught me a blogger that was super successful with her email strategy already. And so then I was able to learn her techniques and kind of mold them to my specific website. Every single website is different. So it's more learning their skills and strategies and figuring out how you can adapt it to your own, um, I don't know, your own website. So that is something that I swear by still to this day is if you're trying to learn something, take a course on it. Not to put a little plug in here because there are a million courses. So go do your own research. I took a ton of bloggers courses. Now we have blogging courses. They might not be a good fit for you. They might be a good fit for you. So we have, um, and if they're not a good fit for you, go and look for another similar um, path because I think this is a good path. So basically what I would recommend 
is starting with a course like our perfecting blogging course and that goes over how to get your actual website set up it's a lot more complicated than just getting your there's just things within a post and like seo strategy so seo if you don't know is search engine optimization and that is how you can rank on google and how pinterest can pick up your post a lot faster so there's like a strategy to it and basically i go through that entire strategy in the perfecting blogging course so that is what i would first start out with then we have perfecting Pinterest. So once you get that initial website set up and have a, that like going on a roll, then I would recommend you getting a Pinterest course. So again, we have a course called perfecting Pinterest and that goes over our Pinterest strategy. Do your own research, whether it will work for you or not. Um, but that will just show you way faster than you trying to figure out Pinterest because again, it's a science, like there's strategy behind it. We don't just go post pins because we want to post pins. Like every single thing that we do within our Pinterest strategy is a strategy. It is all thought about from step one all the way to, I mean, like a year after our, the pin goes live, we're still doing stuff with it. And then I would recommend after like you kind of do that, getting an affiliate marketing course. Um, we personally took, or I personally took making sense of affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is what you can actually do to earn money from your blog in the beginning if you don't have like ads set up. Um, and they're all important. So you can't all take them all at once, but like they all kind of play into each other. So as you get more and more views from Pinterest, then you can start using like your affiliate marketing strategies to earn income from those views. And then once you do that, then I would take a course on email marketing. Email is basically our goal in every single thing that we do within the website. Even in these like blogging videos, you'll hear me be like, get on our blogging email list because uh, and every single week we post a new video we give you the inside tips and tricks anything we're learning anything that's front of mind we give in our private blogging newsletters and the reason that we are so hyper about getting people onto our email list is because we can email them over and over and over again so if someone goes from pinterest to your website that's great and you want that as i've harped on this in this video so much but that might only be one time. So what can we do to make sure that they're coming back over and over and over again? And that's getting on our email list. And so um, your email list is really important, but an email list is so complicated that just don't even think about starting that right now. Like you have a lot more things to worry about than that. So that's like two and a half, that, that's like two years in that you should start worrying about me, that. Maybe like, I think I was at like a year and a half in when I started um, even considering starting my email list. So. That is kind of my um, biggest tips and tricks for starting being a beginning blogger. Also, don't ever compare yourself to people that are, that have like blogs that are, I don't know, like, like by Sophia Lee, for example, we've had that, I've had that blog for five years now. We now have multiple people working on it. We have a team that is not just me and so like obviously like my website's gonna look different than your website we even compare ourselves to people that have websites and businesses now that have turned like you know they have now changed gone from just having like a blog to now turning that blog into a separate business that are 10 years in and we're like look at there and be like well why don't why aren't we like that like why isn't our stuff as good as their stuff well that's because they've had 10 years to figure out that they have five years on us so it's just you need to um research appropriately and knowing that it's going to take baby steps, you're gonna be learning along the way. We do so many things here that we'll look back at and be like, what were we thinking? Like that looks so bad, that doesn't make any sense. It's all just a learning process. So it's just making sure that while you're in that learning process, you're not giving up and you're staying consistent with it. So that wraps up this week's blogging video. As I said, Make sure to subscribe to our blogging email list. We really, really do give super helpful things in that um, email. And actually like all of the questions come from questions that we've received either privately in email about blogging or on our private Facebook group or through these YouTube comments. So um, we just finalized the schedule all the way 
through September and it's really, really good. So make sure to subscribe to that. We'll have the link in the bio, but I will see you at next week's video, which next week's video is so good. It's all of my favorite business, like productivity, podcasts, and books that I've read, which is something that we just get asked all the time. And I'm like obsessed with those kind of things. So I think it's going to be a really fun video.